Can I go live? What if I go live? Going live. You are live, it says. I do have a video at the moment. Okay, well, we'll go with it. Hello, everyone. This is Dion Soul. We are back, or I am back, I should say. I'm going to do a, uh, another uh, stream. Good. We're doing a twofer today. And uh, while my family is out running around, I thought I would do another continue uh, FS economy flight and uh, also uh, promote uh, FS -S Expo that's over in Orlando, Florida right now, even though I'm not there. I'm back here in Southern California. But uh, at any rate, uh, so what we're doing today is we are continuing flying the uh, Cheyenne 2, uh, the Piper Cheyenne 2 by Carinado. Uh, and as I said in the previous uh, video, um, the uh, airplane is, is really a nice airplane. I just can't land the damn thing. If you saw the previous videos, uh, or the previous video I just did, you saw when I came in to land, I ended up, uh, uh, taking out the right side of the airplane, but, uh, oh well, it happens. So what we're going to do today is we're going to continue on and continue the flight on over, um, to, uh, Prescott, Arizona. So without further ado, we'll go ahead as we do our little pan around this airplane here, and then we will remove the uh, artifacts and uh, here in Blythe, California, and then we will make this thing happen. So let me zip on over here, back to the standard one, and then I'll go ahead and uh, here are the static elements, and we'll go ahead and climb on inside uh, to... The aeroplane. So find my little hitbox here to open the door. There it is. Go ahead and crawl on inside. And I'll go ahead and close the door. Uh, close the door. There we go. And we'll go ahead and crawl inside here and we'll make this uh, flight happen. So I hope everyone's doing well. Doing fine. Like I said, just uh, trying to... Uh, get some flight time in while the family is out running around. And... Uh, and like I said, I've been really enjoying flying the uh, the Cheyenne 2. I just can't land it worth the hell, worth the beans. <laughs> but that's okay. I will get it eventually. So we'll go ahead and activate the uh, that annoying piercing sound. Um, get the uh, the uh, GPU connected here. We'll go ahead and turn on the power. Now power is connected. Throw on all of our lights so we can see everything. And we'll go ahead and throw the beacon on. I should have beacon right now. Position light should be active. And then I'll click everything else. And like I said in the previous video, how you know you have the GPU connected or not is when you turn it off, you'll get that voltage and start to wind down. And then if you turn it back on, if you turn the GPU on, then of course now you got full. So you're good to go there. Uh, Karen Auto just needs to model a GPU for the airplane, I guess. If this airplane is, has the connectors for it. If not, I'm taking advantage of the situation. So, anyway, we will go ahead and get ready to go here and get this, uh, GTN 750 programmed and, uh, go back to Sky Vector here with Sky Vector. Um, of course, now you give me a blank screen. Working just a second ago. And there that is. So that's minimized. So if you see it there, that means I can go like this and you guys can see it here. So uh, I went ahead and plugged in Sky Vector from Blythe, California to um, Ernest A. Love Field in uh, Arizona, Prescott, Arizona. And having, what they're doing is they're having me go through uh, the uh, MOAs up and we're going to be at 17,500 feet. And just go doot to doot to doot, and then right on over that way. I'm surprised they didn't have me just go on down this way uh, to Phoenix and then up. Maybe there was better favorable winds going this way, and maybe that's why Sky Vector uh, chose this path. But regardless, that's fine. You know, Sky Vector can do what it's going to do there, and uh, so that's that's fine. So we'll go ahead and uh, pick our poison here, and go ahead and put our. Uh, Flight plan into the uh, GTN 750, and we're going to airway 135 to EDD. Bar, boom. And then from EDD, we do 12. 
12 to Drake. Looking on down to Drake here. There is Drake. Load. And then Prescott, Arizona. K P R C the field and we'll figure out uh, which air which we're gonna land on once we get there uh, this is a uh, uh, like I say again I'm gonna be doing uh, uh, 1200 um, so I'm not going to be doing anything fancy I'm not gonna be doing pilot to ATC and all other happy stuff I'm just just gonna go I'm gonna make things happen but what we do need to do is we do need to get the uh, weather from our current location and hopefully, I'm in. If not, I'll just look it up. It doesn't want to be nice to me. And it appears it doesn't want to be nice to me because I do not have that turned on. Live weather. There we go. Wind 160 at 17 gust 24. Visibility more than 10. Sky clear. Temperature 36. Yes, it is. 2.8. Altimeter 2971. 2971. Two nine seven one. There's two nine seven one. Live weather. Wind one six zero at one seven gust okay. two four. And I'll go ahead and reset those so I have all my electronics outside the sim ready to go. Uh, we are going to go to seventeen thousand five hundred feet. Go ahead and get that ready here. here we go. Oops. Went too far. All right, that takes care of that. And our fuel for FS Economy. We jump back in over here to FS Economy. FS Economy, our fuel, we've got 214 gallons, 58%. We should have enough fuel. That's one thing, advantage of going like for like, uh, using the same airplane that is, that is FS Economy, um, is because the fuel burn is about the same, whereas when I was using other airplane, uh, other airplanes, uh, the fuel burn was off, and so I had to do a lot of fudge factor um, and that sort of thing. So what I'm doing right now with FS Economy is I'm trying to build up my, uh, my cash flow, get my cash up, and uh, that way I can buy another airplane so I can get uh, Bug Eater 64 and um, Rodney, um, uh, uh, Mr. McBride, uh, into FS Economy because especially Mr. McBride stressed his reservation of even getting involved with FS Economy uh, if you can't fly what you want when you want. And so at least I'm trying to, I'm going to work my way up and build myself up where I can get a cash flow in where I can buy them a couple of airplanes where they can fly with FS Economy um, and right out of the box not having to start out at 172 and grind your way up. Um, just basically helping them out by taking the grind out is what I'm doing. So, anyway, so we'll go back to the main here, the main thing, and uh, I see so we, got a, we got a person watching, and I greatly appreciate you watching. I need to say a big howdy in the chat, or a hello into the chat, and then we'll go ahead and make this thing happen here, and we'll get this airplane in the air and uh, head on down the, the proverbial road, if you want to call it that. So... Without further ado, we already got our flight plan in. Flight plan's good to go here. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, make sure all our lights are set and ready to go. Recognition light. Uh, go ahead and put those on. And we'll flip on over to taxis when we're ready to actually taxi. And then uh, make this thing go. So go ahead and throw our props in. And we'll go ahead and start engine number two. Uh, let's check our pressurization. Our, uh, I mean, like I say, I got, still got sticky mouse. I apologize for that. It just explained ever, ever since version 3.4, I've been having a sticky mouse. Uh, I think Prescott's 4,500 feet is the uh, um, is the uh, is the area. Let me, let me check real quick here. Uh, no, it's 50. Elevation is 5,400 or 55,000 feet. Sorry. So 5,000 feet, so I need to put in at least 5,000. So let's go 6,000. We'll go 1,000 more on our uh, uh, on our pressurization there. Well, that takes care of that. Make sure we are good to go everywhere else. And I think we are. Let's go ahead and start over. Go ahead and hit fuel number one. Oh, I got to jump down in here and like this and say clear prop. And then uh, we'll go ahead and... 
Hit our little ticky tick ta ticky tick sound and go ahead and start some engines. Start the right engine first. We'll assume the passengers are already in play and ready to go. There it goes. Engine number two is started. Go ahead and get rid of the uh, striker. And we're at full steam ahead. Engage the generator. Generator engage. And then we need to go over here, turn on the right bus tie generator right there. Well, that's now engaged. And now we need to do the same thing over here for the left generator. Fuel on. Ticky tacky on. And we'll watch our uh, RPM to above, right here, above 20%. And then introduce fuel. Make sure we don't have any kind of a bad start. Nope. It's all good. We'll get rid of the fuel, that, fuel off. We don't need the fuel anymore. Everything looks good, looks good. BB Jamin Mon. Okay. everything else while we're doing our little run up here. Temperature is looking good. We go up for at 50%. That's close enough. That is close enough. And then we can go ahead and release the parking brake. And uh, once I get to the uh, where we need to be, then I will uh, go ahead and well, let's go ahead and turn everything else on while we're at it. What the hell? Let's turn everything else on. Rain. Weather is on, even though it's not giving me anything. Range is going to be 20 nautical miles. There we go. Normal traffic. We're good to go there. All right. And we were at 160 was our win, correct? Okay, so 160. So if we're at 160, let's take off at runway 17 then. So we'll take off this way and just go. All right. Easy enough. Number 502 Delta Mike is taxiing to runway 17 for straight out departure. Light traffic. I said that exactly backwards, didn't I? This thing really lags when you, uh, when you, uh, Give it fuel. It doesn't. It doesn't spool up right away. It takes its time, which is probably what it should be doing. And look and see if we are clear. I don't see anything coming. I don't expect there to be anything here.
And if I am too loud, you guys just let me know. In the chat, because I can see the chat. I can't see anything else, but I can see the chat. to backtrack partially on the, uh, yeah, partially backtrack the uh, runway 17. Flight traffic number 502 Delta Mike is backtrack runway 17 for straight out departure. Flight traffic. It's a fun airplane. I really like it. Um, like I say again, I'm just having a real hard time landing, um, and I, I'll just get it over time. It's no big deal. I'll just, I'll master it eventually. That's the advantage of flight simulation. If it, you can keep on trying and trying again, is hit the reset button. So you get it right. Real cool little plank. Like I said, it kind of reminds me of a baby uh, King Air 350. Mr. Bug Eater 64 is in the house. A big howdy to you, sir. I hope you are doing very well. I'm working it. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get my, uh, my cash flow up so we can uh, get better planes so we can all fly on uh, FS Economy when we so desire to do so. I'm taking it for the team so you don't have to. Because that's what I do. Alrighty, I kind of did a mini uh, wound up or uh, run up when I was parked, so we'll just go with that. Get my uh, heading all set and everything else. Heading is set. No problem, my friend. That's what it's all about. It's all about helping each other out. Because I know you do the same for me. Okay, everything is set and ready to go. Uh, autopilot is... Let's see if I can go ahead and uh, prep it. So, uh, autopilot is prepped and ready to go. Set my pitch trim. Pitch trim needs to be right about there. Along that, along that spot right there a little bit. All I really need, I don't need much. This airplane, the pitch trim is really pretty nice. All right, now I think I am ready to put the fire to her. All righty, here we go. Off to, uh, well, actually, you know what? No, 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 no. Making airs. Air in progress. Landing lights on. Drove on. Take one little look outside. See, I don't see my, uh, 
my uh, uh, tip lights. My, t my, my, my wing tip lights don't come on, and I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Let's do that. Let's go that way. See if it works there. There we go. Now they're on. So I have to sacrifice. So I have to sacrifice. Uh, um, I have to sacrifice uh, taxi for recognition. Okay. Good. All right. All right. Let's do this. We'll go fifty percent in power. Then I'll go ahead and increase it to uh, 1,400 uh, feet per minute or uh, pounds per whatever it is. The top gauges. Don't cross the top gauge. And there we go. We're off the ground. Don't take much. FSE flight not started. Oh man! I didn't start the FSE flight. Okay. Well then, guess what, guys? You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna back off. We're gonna go back down with our, and then we're gonna come in. I'm gonna to try to land this. I forgot to start my FS economy, and that's no good. I wish you'd have the ability where you can put a check mark on the FS economy client, where as soon as you uh, have wheels up or whatever, it'll automatically start it, or or when you release the parking brake or whatever. We should do that. Well, then that way you don't have to worry about it. You can be concentrated on flying and not have to worry about crossing your T's and dotting your I's and all that other happy stuff. So we'll get to go and try to do a, a landing. runways over there so we'll go out a little bit so we'll come on around and then uh, I'll land the airplane accept the flight and then we can go to Prescott Arizona Right now, that means we are not, uh, we're not even logged in. Now I'm logged in, but I'm not, uh, well, that's okay. Let's come on around. But this airplane likes to drop like a rock. Where's the uh, airport? Okay, there it is. Now this is totally hand landing it now. No computer control. So definitely. Land and start again. Got, got that right. You're too high, pull up, pull up, go around, too high. I'm going in too fast, so I got a lot. I got a lot of airspeed. I gotta get rid of. I got way too much energy, so I'm just gonna float the plane.
load it. That's fine. Float, float, float. There we go. A lot better. First time. Now, let's see if I can get the thing stopped. Now people are going to say, well, Dion, what have you been complaining for? That's the best landing I've done so far. And that was with a 20 knot headwind, so... Right now we're still working off of uh, just regular gas. I don't have, uh, I have not started, have not started the FS economy yet. Let me go down there and then spin around, then I'll start FS economy. Then we can go about our business, but that was good. That was a good, I landed 93 feet per minute and uh, smooth as butter and all that other happy stuff. So very good. Very cool. So far, that's been my best landing in this airplane so far. I didn't break a prop. Let's spin this bad boy around. I, again, I hope everyone is doing well. Just been busy for me, just been busy with uh, life stuff. Stop right now and then let's go ahead and start the flight this time okay now the flight started five passengers in 214 214 gallons of fuel let's go to work put my uh, takeoff back to where it needs to be and we will try this again power been going seventy five percent power that's a little high I back it off a little bit and there we go we are off the ground gear up flaps no flaps required off and then let's see if uh, the autopilot can kick in autopilot did take of course that's not good because I think it took really put me up there I don't think it took I know why it's doing what it's doing. Because it auto when I when I turned it on, it automatically set to 95 or 75 knot climb. <laughs> no, that just made the passengers a little scary. Not a big deal. Ah! All right, back off on our power. Keep our. Uh, Be 
keep our temperature in check. And our torque. And we're climbing to 17,500 feet. We're climbing to 180 knots, indicated. We have the wind at our back at 15 knots, 211 over the ground. And let's do an external shot. Should have been off to one side just a little bit. That sounds so cool. I like that. All right, we are climbing at uh, 2,500 feet per minute. was 5,000 feet it said. Well, I'll have to change all that. to actually have an airplane that is the same as what you're actually the alias you're using for you know in this case FS economy that's that's really makes things a lot better party 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 Alrighty, sir. Well, you take care, and uh, definitely, sorry, I couldn't see the chat fast enough. Uh, definitely, uh, do, do what you got to do, man. Got to take care of business. I totally understand. I'll be here, just sitting here, just cranking away. I want to put stop time, time stamps on the chat. I don't know how to do that. Doesn't look like you, you can. Mr. Coffee's in the house. Hi, hello there. Yeah, it's uh, the orthos are awesome. Orthos are awesome. They really help the immersion factor up a lot. And what that is, I think that's the California or um, the Colorado River, I think. Let me go back to the other side. Uh, we're going north, so yeah, that would be the Colorado River. We're on the California side. Over there on the other side is the Arizona side. Because uh, what we are doing... The, yeah, there's Parker. Okay, let me uh, get my bearings here real quick. And I'll just jump over here to this other screen. Yeah, we're just... California or uh, Colorado River is right there and then uh, we're following right on up and then we're gonna hit uh, Needles make a right turn at Needles and just go straight east uh, right to Prescott Arizona so yeah
Orthos are awesome. No doubt about it. The only time that they get you in trouble is when uh, when the satellite images that they get don't exactly line up um, with each other, and then you get and then then it breaks the immersion. Uh, or you know, like right here, you can see this right here, this cloud right here. I mean, you could play it off, but even though that cloud is baked onto the scenery, but uh, you know, little things like that. But all in all, I'll take those little problems like that any day. At least I have something. Uh, this plane is the uh, um, is the uh, uh, Carinado, um Cheyenne Two, the Piper Cheyenne Two, and uh, it's the same airplane that I use for my FS Economy. Of course, now I'm trying to yell over the sound of the airplane. Let me back off the sound on the airplane. It's not a bad airplane. I like it. I've got no problem with it. It's the, it's the same alias that I'm using for my FS economy flight. And uh, it's a turboprop airplane. Uh, they were manufactured from 1979, I think. 75. Long in there somewhere. 75 maybe. All the way to uh, 1985. And then they stopped making them. And then I just basically took the existing livery... Uh, that one of the liveries that came with the airplane and then uh, got rid of the lettering and then put my uh, and branded my November 502 Delta Mike on it and of course put up American flag on it you gotta you gotta have your your cup your country colors you know <laughs> but it is it's a, it's a nice plane it looks really good yeah it does yeah it does have uh, of course, I'll break the immersion factor here, but uh, I'll break the immersion factor here, but you can, um, let's see if you can open the doors while flying. Could, no, I won't. I won't. Maybe the cabin department's right here, and uh, that sort of thing, but it won't, it won't let me... Uh, it won't let me open it while flying, so which is fine, whatever. But anyway, um, the only th I've been finding some problems with the airplane because the airplane's new. It's not even out on the xplane.org store as of this post or as of this video. Uh, it's probably going to be in the next day or two, and then they'll probably release it on the xplane.org uh, store. But um, but yeah, I uh, I went ahead and bought it through Carinado's website. It's the first time. This is the first airplane I've bought directly through Carinado's website. Uh, normally, I, I would just wait for it to come out on the on the org, and then I just buy it over on the org store. But uh, I decided to go ahead and go for it because, again, like I said, I I um, wanted this, because this alias is the same as, the alias I'm using in, in uh, FS Economy is the same as this airplane, and so that's why I bought it. And I like turboprops. You know, like I said in my first video that I did this morning, um, I, I, I'm more partial to prop planes than um, the jets. I like jets, don't get me wrong. I like jets like anybody else. But uh, but yeah, it does. It looks really good inside. As a matter of fact, I did not turn on my uh, one switch here. That switch is for my, uh, that's the bus tie switch. Left engine gen to activate the bus here. If that's how it works, if that's how uh, Carinato set it up. But yeah, it looks really good. Carinado is always good. Carinado is always good, uh, especially on their interiors. It really looks really good. You can see the reflections off of the windows and stuff, and the lights. You got the lights, and they they have articulating lights where you can move around, and the light bounces off of everything and moves at nighttime. It all moves when you when you articulate uh, the lights, which is really cool. Carinado does make good stuff, you know. It's they, they you, I can't really complain too much. Oh yeah, I can. I can always complain about something. I mean, that's just human nature. But uh, this this switch right here. I mean, if I want to complain about something, this switch right here. If I can get my mouse to stop sticking, 
Uh, this switch doesn't work. It, it's 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 modeled, but not. Uh, it says it's overhead lights, so I don't know if this is intended as a switch, where you turn this switch on and then all the interior lights, oops, <laughs> all the interior lights come on when you come into the aircraft. That might have been the intention for this light, but it doesn't work when you do that, which is kind of a bummer. But eh, it is what it is. See the fasten seat belts. Uh, once you turn them on, you can't turn them off. See if I turn them off right now, they're still there. So, and we are at uh, and we're at cruise altitude, by the way. So I, what I need to do then is I need to back off um, my props. Back off my props down to about 2,000 RPM or so. Back off in that 2,000 RPM, and let's see what my speed-wise or my uh, my temperatures. Uh, my temperature's still hovering in the green, right around here at 700. So we're fine. Uh, answer to your question, Mr. Coffee. No, I am not a real pilot. Um, I wish I was. Um, I would, uh, if I had the financial resources to do so, um, I would be up there at the airport flying every you know every day uh, I would be inhaling all the instructions on learning to fly if I had the financial resources because I really do love to fly but I don't have the financial resources so I do it I spend all my efforts in the simulation world and try to make it as real as possible but still have fun we you know the most important thing out of anything you do realistically is to have fun I know that sounds corny but it's true, you know, it is what it is, it's, it's to have fun. And so that's why I spend the time, you know, um, you know, putting in orthos like this in my simulation to at least when I'm flying over um, an area, at least when the satellite image was taken, that's what it looked like when the satellite image was taken. So, you know, I'm cool with that. And I and I like I said, you know, I I like general aviation aircraft. I mean, I the jets are cool and all the big jets and all that sort of thing are good. Um, I, I have no problem with them. I fly them too from time to time. But if I have the choice between flying big jets or flying general aviation aircraft, I'll take general aviation aircraft hands down over big jets any day. Uh, it's just because. Um, I, you have freedom. Well, I, I'm, I'm a big advocate, strong advocate of freedom. And uh, I, I like the freedom to go wherever I want to and do whatever I want as opposed to uh, being locked in a box of, oh, you got to go from this point to this point. And yeah, you make your money in flight jobs or, or a sim buddy or whatever for your uh, virtual airline and you make a lot of money. But you're 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 kind of like going point A to point B, and it's kind of it's boring after a while. So having general aviation, you know, is is the way to go for me for me anyway. But it's, it's to each his own, you know. I think that's Lake Havasu right there. Yeah, that is that's Lake Havasu right there. That's uh, out of the box X plane. Uh, Lake Havasu now. You can see the, uh, the they, they look flat because uh, those buildings are not 3D. They're not rendered in 3D. That's uh, those are the orthos. Yeah, very good. Business jets are good too. Like I said, I like all jets. I mean, I like all airplanes. All all airplanes are cool. It's just that if on when I start to if you start to actually weigh in on what you like more than the other, I tend I go more towards. Um, you know, general aviation. Uh, but you could make the argument saying that, well, business jets are kind of general aviation. It's just that that bridge between real, you know, raw jet, general aviation and, you know, big jets. Corporate jets are cool. I mean, I've been, you know, I've been flying the, uh, the Premier One, which is really a cool airplane. But, 
uh, I've been burning a lot of fuel with it with FS economy. With FS economy, it just burns too much fuel. Whereas right here, I could be in a like for likes situation like I am right now by getting uh, this airplane, uh, and I'm only burning 43 gallons, you know, per per engine. So I'm only doing you know 86 gallons per hour, and uh, which leaves me more profit. So, yes, I'm not going as fast. I'm doing. I'm only doing 276 knots above the ground. So I'm not going as fast as I would be in a, in, a, in the Premier One. But that's okay. Uh, I, I'm, I'm cool. You know, I'm cool with that. That means I can just, you know, I can just step back and and smell the smell the roses, right? And I see my live traffic is giving me a message where it server and didn't get any information, which is kind of a bummer. And there is the Colorado River. As we're making our turn here at uh, Needles, California. Actually, we're in Arizona now because, like I say again, the dividing line between California and Arizona is the uh, Colorado River. And matter of fact, that is probably Interstate 40 right there. Interstate 40 coming from uh, Barstow and that area behind us. So we'll be kind of bouncing around between, you know, hopscotching over uh, Interstate 40. Been on that road quite a few times over the years. They do to a degree, uh, but you have to. They, they, they you can log time. Um, from what I understand now, uh, the FAA is starting to be a little bit more lenient, but not too much because they got to walk that line of people, you know, you know, fudging the system, you know, and cheating, cheating the system. So yeah, it's it's you got to walk the line. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, for the senior. Yeah, the uh, ortho for XP is awesome. Our, I'll take ortho for XP any day. But again, I do have a five-year-old computer, and so you can see I'm starting to uh, get frame rate hits right now until it catches itself up, and then I'll be all right again. And there it goes. I see my dogs are looking at me. They want me to feed them. But we're not that far out. So, Like I said at the start of the video, my hardest point right now is just landing the plane. That's uh, That's been my challenge on this particular airplane. Um, I've only had one good quality landing. Uh, the rest of the time, I've been fighting this, fighting this airplane landing, trying to get my landings down. And I'll get it over time. Let's take a look on the other side of the wing and see what we got over there. That's the, uh, the co-pilot side. We'll go over here to the pilot side, see if we got anything of excitement here to look at. Not much, really. <laughs> oh, yeah, and we also have the dash cam. There you go. Now we got the dash cam. Yeah, I have, um, actually, I have a, I'm trying to think what I have. Uh, the video card I have is a 1080, uh, is a, a 1080 Founders Edition, so it's not a, it's not a 1080 Ti or anything like that, it's just a 1080. And um, the uh, uh, Intel, it's, a, it's an Intel 4790, but I don't know. Um, the, the, the 4790, I don't know um, what the, I don't know if that's an i7, I think that might be an i7. 
it's the, the 4790, and it's and it's not the overclocked version. It's not a K version. It's just the standard 4790. I'm supposed to be only going at 4.3. Uh, or I'm sorry, not 4.3. Uh, a 3.6, but I overclocked it anyway. Uh, and then I have a water cooler on the CPU itself to keep it cool. And uh, like I say, it's 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 easily five years old and. And I've been working with computers off and on ever since I was, <laughs> no, since, uh, yeah, it's, it's, an, it's an i7, yeah, yeah. I, I don't remember if it was an i7 or not, uh, but yeah, the 40, it's a 4790, and it's just a standard one, and I went ahead and overclocked it because I do have a water cooler. I have um, those uh, uh, inline water coolers, the ones that you don't build yourself, the ones you just buy at the store. Um, I forgot, I don't know if it's a cool master, I forgot the manufacturer, and I put that in there, and uh, it was only like 89 bucks, so it wasn't extremely expensive, um, but it, it, it made the world a difference, so I was able to overclock it to 4 gigahertz, and I, I, I pushed the video, or the, the CPU to 4 gigahertz, and that's about all I could go, you know, uh, with it. So... But yeah, so I got an older computer. I like to upgrade to. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm. I've always been a fan of Intel. I've had. I've had both over the years. Um, Intel and AMD. But the the latest AMDs are looking pretty nice. I mean, it just kind of like. It's kind of like you know. It's you, you're not paying as much money, and you're getting a lot of bang for your buck. A lot of performance. Uh, and I'm still going to go water cool no matter what. You know, I'm still going to water cool. I, 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 you know, I'm sold on uh, water cooling. You know, those those internal water coolers that uh, you just buy at the store that are already uh, encapsulated. You don't do. You don't build your own. Um, I'm I'm totally down with that. I'm I'm cool with that. Um, and then the video card. The video card's a biggie because the video card. You know, get a Kingpin uh, 2080 Ti. Or um, just go ahead and go with an XP, um, a Titan XP. But a Titan XP is so damn expensive; it's like two grand, two thousand dollars or more for a Titan XP. But you know, I usually get five years out of my computers anyway. So, oh wow, yeah, I didn't build my own um, water cooling. I was I was too scared to be honest. I was just too scared if I did it myself and I when I screw them up then I'm screwed and so that's why I I'm the uh, video card is is uh, that I have here is, is air cooled and then of course the CPU is water cooled so but yeah we're the airplane is really a good airplane it really is I, I like it I like the uh, I like this airplane a lot. It's it's got a lot of knobs and buttons and buttons and switches you have to turn and or or do what you want. You know, I like the fact that it has the integration of the GTN 750. Also has the Librain or Librarian, Librain, whatever you call it, the uh, the weathering or the water effects on the windshields. So when it rains, it looks like real rain. Um, that's you know. That, that plug-in that uh, is, is is supported by the airplane. So, and yes, it was $37.95, but hey, if I get my use out of it, I don't care, you know. As long as I get my use out of it, which right now I'm gonna be flying the hell out of it because I'm, like I said at the start of the video, I'm trying to uh, build finance, uh, my, my finances up with FS Economy, so then, Bug Eater 64, my flyers, uh, Bug Eater 64 and uh, Mr. McBride, the two that come to mind, that I can buy airplanes for because they don't want to go through the, and I don't blame them, I mean, I, I can totally understand, um, they don't want to go through the grind, start out with a Cessna 172 and then work your way up to be able to get a faster, um, or to work your way up the airplane. Me, personally, I don't mind, I, I don't care. So hey, you know uh, I can if I can uh, get some build it up and uh, once I once I graduate out of this airplane, then this airplane will become available. I'll just uh, grandfather it to the Solus wings on 
my FS Academy uh, via uh, VA, and then it will be the airplane that for my for the VA to use, and they can get in that and fly that if they want to. You know, it's not a big deal, and they don't have to use this particular airplane. They can use whatever they want as long as it falls into the criteria of, of weight, fuel uh, capacity, and basically fuel capacity and weight capacity, and they can fly whatever they want. It's just that they got to fall within that and. And that's why I bought it, because if I had it like for like, then I didn't have to sit there and recalculate, try to make things work. I just get in the airplane and fly. So that's what I like about it. That's why I, I bought the airplane. So, well, we are doing 200, 197 indicated. I'm going to see if I can squeeze a little bit more out of that. I'm going to back off on my props. Because we were doing 2,000 RPM on the Props. We're at 1900. No, nope. because I'm trying to keep my my temperature down. Because I'm right at 700 uh, Celsius. I'm trying to keep it a little bit less on the uh, ITT. So I'm trying to push the uh, props or whatever my sweet spot is. So I can, because I'm trying to keep right around 200, uh, indicated airspeed 200 knots. And right now I just can't seem to do it. Go 2100 RPM. Yeah, if I go up, up my RPM here, let me go to 2100 RPM. My props. See if I can get some uh, bees a little bit more performance out of those props. It's starting to go back up. Not quite there. Almost there, but just not quite. going to be at 5,000 feet there. Um, I'll have to key up and get, uh, let's get a little closer. Press Condor and SP Love Field. I can get it right now. Bravo. 2300 Zulu weather. Wind 230 at 18. Visibility more than 10. Sky clear. Temperature 16. Dew point minus 1. Altimeter 2986. Arriving runway 30, departing runway 30. Advised on initial contact, you have Bravo. Uh, 30, okay. Same things, and I'm sitting here trying to figure out what the hell I'm going to do. <laughs> Altimeter 3000. Arriving runway 30. Departing runway 30. Advise on initial contact. You have Bravo. Well, that's good that you figured it out. You know, that's that's important. Because, like I say, frame rates is so damn important, you know. 
Prescott Scott heard his new love field information from. Yeah, the, the Ryzen, because like I say, now I'm, I, the Ryzen is 3200 or 3300 or whatever they are now. Um, I, I'm due. I'm due for an airplane, and, or due for an airplane. Due for, yeah, I'm due for a real airplane. Um, no, I'm due for a, 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 new, a new computer for sure. Arriving runway 30, departing runway 30. Advise on initial contact, you have Bravo. So it said 12,000, uh, what did it say? Uh, 12,000, I can't see it. Uh, 12,900, okay. 12,900. Prescott Ernest in Love Field information, Bravo. I'll go ahead and back off on my power a little bit. Wind 220 and 20, visibility more than 10. Sky conditions 9,000 scattered, temperature 16. Yeah, one thing about flight simulation, it's hard to be able to keep track of the chat unless you're just in cruising mode. But when you're already starting to descend and all that other stuff, it gets, uh, it gets it gets hairy sometimes. I'm sitting there trying to keep up with the chat and and then try to concentrate on what I'm doing at the same time and not crash. But again, again, I just want to say thank you very much for uh, stopping by. I appreciate it very much. Information, Bravo. 2300 Zulu weather. Wind 220 and 18. Visibility more than Waiting for 10. the craziness to ensue. Sky conditions 9000 scattered. Temperature 16. Dew point minus 1. Altimeter 3000. Arriving runways 21 left. 21 right. Departing runways 21 left. Oh, they changed it on left. me. 21 right. One left and two one right. Yeah, I just caught that. One left, two one right. Uh, okay, do I have? What do I have? I got two one left. I got. Uh, I can do that one. That's fine. So once I get to Drake, then I will. Uh, vector myself around where I need to go. Very good. Wow. Rise to 1600, you can overclock it to 3.7. Wow. I'm glad, I'm glad to hear it. That's, that's awesome. AMD has stepped up their game big time. AMD has really done well. And that's fine. That's 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 good for us as as the consumers. It's all about capitalism, man. All about capitalism. All right, well, Chile was supposed to be at uh, 1300, and instead we're at uh, we're at 12. But oh well, 12900. It's over here, so I can see. Blind is bad. Yeah, I think the next air, or the next uh, computer I get will probably will be AMD. You know, but I'm, I don't know. I have to wait and see. I don't. I don't want to say that for sure, and then end up. Oh, and then I end up getting a deal, and I'm getting an Intel. You know, so I'll just have to wait and see. Whatever the deal comes around is probably because I. I know either way, either Intel or AMD, for what I do, it's going to be fine. So I, I can't lose. So. 
whatever deal comes down the pipe. Okay, Drake was supposed to be at 12,300. I'll be there way before then. I wish this uh, uh, Carinado would go over here and put a dual, a dual GTN 750 uh, like I have with the uh, uh, King Air uh, 350. And that way I could put my, uh, my map over here and then have my, um, you know, this over here, that kind of thing. I know, first world problem, I know. Damn first world problems. bit of uh, haze in the atmosphere. But we are heading right towards it. Now I have to do some finagling to get my way around to be able to line myself up to land on runway 2-1. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, they say this is 4K. This airplane is 4K. I don't know if it is or isn't, but my 1080 Ti seems to uh, seems to survive. Okay, now I don't want that. What I need to do is I need to go over here like this, like this, activate. I really should be way out over here. And it says I need to, uh, I need to vector myself, so. so I will vector myself. Where, 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 where I be in relation to this. Okay, I'm coming in like this. I will come around. I'll do a right hand pattern. I'll just vector myself around. And I'll lose some altitude. I'll get to. Uh, let's go down to right around. right there at 79. Well, that's our, that's 6,300 feet is that, uh, I'm supposed to be at 7,900 feet right there. So, okay, we'll go down to 7,900 uh, feet. We'll descend at uh, 1,500 feet per minute. Okie dokie. I will make my turn. Button. 
as I'm making my turn. I'll just go squeeze right in here. I'll go out away a little bit. I'll go out away a little bit. I'll go past this, uh, I'll go past that mountain range over there. The mountain range out there, I'll go past it, then I'll come on around. That just gives me time for me to uh, lose my altitude. I'll just line up and land and hope to God that I don't strike the prop again like I did last time on the last video. Yeah, I got so many mods that I have bought over over the years. Bought, bought is that a correct word? Bought, um, anyway, bought over the years. And uh, like I just recently uh, got... Uh, I recently got a uh, uh, Realistic uh, Pro, which is really nice. It adds sounds uh, to it, to the airplanes, and uh, I, I liked it. That was, that was a good buy. I think it was like $19 or something. I think it was. It was worth it. It was worth it. That was, this is one of those, this is one of those uh, mods that's worth it. At least, at least I feel it that way. Yeah, I feel it should. Ready. Come on down. Okay, it's 7,900 feet. I'll line myself up. And pray that we get us down in one piece. Yeah, it's a cool, it's a cool mod. It's worth it. I, I, well, I, I put my stamp of approval on it. Let me say it that way. Um, I feel, I feel it's worth it to me. You know, have the extra sounds. Real view, yeah. Real view is another one. Um, I didn't bite on real view because I thought that was kind of a. Uh, I thought that one was more like um, a comp competition with X, uh, with X camera. And uh, so I didn't bite on that one. I might, I might someday, you know. I gotta watch my, I gotta watch my money. <laughs> I bought two airplanes. I bought the the, the XP, uh, realistic. You know, I've kind of spent, spent almost a hundred bucks in in like a three year, in about a week and a half. So it's kind of like I gotta, I gotta back off. I can. I can only I can only get away with that and hide it under the table for so long before my wife just sits there and says, "WTF, Dion, you're spending all this money on this simulation." So, I got I got to watch I got to watch my money. Because then I get myself in a trap. It's like, oh, hey, if you spend all this money on this simulation, then that means I can go buy this. And so, and if it's something that's, that's, uh, you know, that she wants, which would be fine, except for, you know, don't want it to be too expensive. When you get married, and when you've been married for 33 years like I have, because I've been married for 33 years, you, you know how to play these games. All right, so now I went uh, 22 degrees off of uh, where I want to be. And I'm going to spin around. Spin around to 300. Have a look on the side here, see what if we got anything pretty to look at. That's a cool thing about the, what the Karen Auto did, because you always have this stupid uh, menu system right here. Just, you know, you can get rid of it now by just 
using your scroll wheel on your mouse. Mouse over it and use your scroll wheel. That's really cool. I like that. That's a new, new thing. Hey, there's a Mr. Entertainment Hacker himself, the one and only. Hail to you, sir. I hope you are doing well. Just sitting here, just flying, uh, just flying around, just trying to make a little bit of scratch for the company and kind of enjoying uh, the fact that the family is out running around doing their own thing. So gave me an opportunity to stream a little bit to get myself ready for uh, final approach here. Um, been having a hell of time, hell of a time trying to land this damn airplane, but I'll get it. Very nice. Yeah, I haven't uh, dabbled in too much of. Uh, Thank you, sir. I definitely appreciate you hitting that like button. Definitely, definitely appreciate that. Um, very, very much. I need, I need all the help I can get. Please help me. Um, yeah, I prepared 3D. Um, I haven't bit yet. Um, I might someday. You know, I'm not. I, I'm, I'm just content with X Plane. I am happy with X Plane. Um, I, I, I haven't had any problems with X Plane, so you know, they haven't pissed me off yet. <laughs> <laughs> Rage quit. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got to do here. We're still got to be at 7,900 feet. Well, that's telling me that uh, that uh, we're, we're not in the glide sl glide slope yet for the thing to take over. backing off my speed a little bit here we are on technically we're on final we're on long final get right around 150 knots and I'll deploy the gear yeah I've gotten so used to explaining when I went back to FS or uh, FSX SE uh, that I have on my Steam account. Um, I, I just couldn't do anything. I said, you know what, screw this, and I went right back to explain. <laughs> okay, deploying landing gear. Let's see if we got. Did I ever turn off my lights? My landing lights? No. Never did turn off my landing lights, did I? Oh well. Safety, right? That's what it's all about safety. Have your lights on all the time for safety. And we should capture the glide slope now. The art of the, uh, and it is, just captured it, so we're good. So this thing should take me right on home. Take me right on down. Like I say again, what my problem is is that once I get where I take over, uh, then all of a sudden that transition by me taking over and it, it's just such an abrupt transition from the autopilot that uh, then I end up, you know, you know, prop strike or whatever. Or I land with too much energy. I gotta get, I gotta bleed the energy off. Get too impatient. You know, stuff like that. And what was my? Uh, I need to go back to the ATIS. Prescott Ernest is in Love Field. Three zero zero. Three zero zero on my altimeter setting. Altimeter. 
that in there. Well, that's cool. An F-35, very nice. Very nice. Can you take off? Let's see, F-35, you can take off vertically, can't you? Wasn't that uh, a vertical uh, a vertical takeoff? And land, especially the Navy version? Strike fighter or whatever they call it. Got the two jets, one in the front fan and one in the back, or the exhaust, and then it just vertically takes off, something like that. Or I'm th maybe thinking another airplane. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Alrighty. Getting down to 120 knots. Slowly trying to bleed off uh, airspeed. I can see that be challenging going like this as you're trying to, you know, table the airplane. The wind's messing with me right now. I'm seeing my uh, indicated airspeed going like crazy. Hey, that's convenient. A house right, right in the path of landing your airplane. Won't be exactly straight, but hey, I'll be floating in a little bit. That's a little, a little hard, or not hard landing, but that's a little, uh, I know why my airplane is dying, my engines are dying, and they come back to life, because when I go too far, I bet you I got uh, the, the, the cutoff there at that speed. Yeah, that's what it is. I have a cutoff, and thank you. I appreciate that. Now I'm not recovering from the uh, landing. That's weird. I should be getting, ex should be uh, catching back up. That's weird. Well, at least I got on the ground and I got off. I can't go anywhere. The airplane froze on me. I wonder if there's a bug in the airplane. That's strange. That's the first time it's done. This is the first time it's done that. See, I got full patrol. Hmm. There's feather. I can get it back. That is weird. Well, 
but it's like I got my brakes on even though I don't have my brakes on there we go that's strange Yeah, I'm not paused. See, there's pause right there. Of course, you'll see in a second. But that's weird. Now, now it just locked up like that. Yeah, I know the master cautions. Yeah, I'm getting one back. There we go. Now that is weird. I, I don't know. That is strange. I need to restart my uh, sim when I get this one. I'm gonna. I mean, as soon as we get here, we're gonna watch the landing, and then I'll then I'll call it anyway. That's strange. Okay, where are we going to put this thing? Put it over here, away from everybody, I guess. Or we can put it right over here. Put it over here. Matter of fact, I think the way this is, uh, if I remember right, there is a parking spot right here anyway. We'll just park it right here. Why not? Now I'm going to hit the brake. Brake has been applied. And generators are on. Turn off the generators. GPU is on. Uh, how you know the GPU is on is you uh, look at uh, look at the voltmeter. Anyway, there. Now now we're on battery. I engage the GPU, and then you know then we got 28 back to 28 volts. So this airplane doesn't support the GPU. I just happen to have the GPU bound to one of my uh, joystick keys. And so I turn it on that way, and but it accepts it. So hey, if it accepts it, I'm going to take it. So very good. See what else I need to turn off here. That goes off, 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 off. On, quit sticking. Those are all off already. And I got 10 hours and 10.3 hours on this airplane now. Very good. Keep on fighting it. Keep the struggle going. Off, off, off. Done there, done there, done there. Uh, pressurization. Pressurization is all normal. Problems there. There. Fuels. Fuels are right here. Full cross feed. Full right tank or left tank. Full right tank. Go on. Go. Those are all off, so now there's no fuel. That there. And uh, we'll finish the flight. Now the flight is finished. Jump over here to uh, FS Economy. And FS Economy did uh, order. I'm up to 273k, so I'm progressing right along. And I got 153 gallons left in uh, in my airplane, so 
I can go somewhere else. Now I just gotta decide where I wanna go next. I'm not gonna do it right now, but decide where I wanna go. Where I can make the most money. I have to figure that out. I'm not gonna do that right now. Right now, what I wanna do is I want to see. Um, let's have a look at the uh, landing. If you do that, I need. Back just a little right about there. Okay. Power. Or runway. Wrong runway. Right. Prime as over there. Must be a runway over here. Is that it? Down around. I just want to go back, pull back a little bit. Where did I where did I taxi off? I taxied off way over here. Here. Right about here, this spot right here. In. And of course now uh traffic um pops in. From uh, live traffic, that's funny. Live traffic just pops in. Then I need to uh, release the camera a little bit so I can get a little bit higher. And watch me land. I think I'm crabbing a little bit. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, clean, hold it, clean, and then boom. So squirrely. That's pretty cool, though. FSE flight not started. Because I don't want it started. Now what I want to go to. I can see the, what a passenger would see, I guess. Thank you, thank you. Definitely appreciate the flowers, for sure. I appreciate that very much. bad not too bad a lot better like I said the more I fly it the more I fly the airplane the better I'll just get over time but you see how it just like wham and like like really close I had that problem with the uh, uh, with the uh, King Air 350 but the more and more I flew the airplane the better I got at it So, yeah.
I'm happy. I'm happy with it. I am happy with it. Yep, I'm happy with it. We'll take it. Alrighty, sir, Mr. Coffee. I definitely appreciate you very much for uh, hanging out with me. It definitely makes the uh, getting people in here in the chat it helps helps that helps me out a lot. Uh, also gives me the fear of being the center of attention. <laughs> but hey, the only way you, you can do it, you can just do it, you know. Yep, death perception is everything. You're absolutely right. I can't see. I can't see. I can't see. <laughs> But anyway, so yeah, it's it, it turned out turned out really good. It's a good good airplane, good airplane. I I, I like it. I like it more once I uh, um. I like it more once I get more successful. Get more successful with it. Uh, now I would like to have uh, um, XP. Uh, was it XP expansion? Uh, Re uh, Reality XP or XP expansion, whatever they call themselves, make one for this airplane. Where you're able to walk around and um, walk around and take, you know, all the uh, uh, individually and take all the uh, stuff off, all the, the things. Also, too, another little tidbit of information, a little bit as well, is that I noticed even on real world airplanes um, and, and all the ones that came with it, nobody uh, chromed. Nobody chrome the uh, the uh, the intake uh, intake bands, and I couldn't figure out. I was looking for somebody that would chrome the intake bands, and nobody done it. So through trial and error, you know, using uh, GIMP, I, I was able to chrome chromify it. But on the real world, the real airplanes, they're all they're all black as well. All the the bands that go around the intake are all black, and I'm wondering if there's a reason for that. I wonder if the the flakes of the chrome gets inside the engine and that's why they don't do it and so it's a different material i don't know but other airplanes have chrome you know i've seen other other, other airplanes have the chrome things so i don't know but anyway sir i'm going to take my leave of you i'm going to chill and um i'm going to uh take a break and uh make myself something to eat or something so I definitely appreciate you watching. Definitely uh, spread it to all your friends. Like, hey, this guy's an idiot, and this guy, but this guy likes to really like fly his airplanes, <laughs> and that sort of thing. Because I do have fun. Yeah, uh, with with helos, I don't. I, I've tried to fly uh, hel uh, helicopters. That's Bug Eater 64's thing. Um, I I just never could get into helico helicopters. I could cover them but then when i go to touch down um i would just lose control and i'd end up flipping them and that sort of thing so you know it is what it is anyway thank you sir i appreciate it very much and i'm gonna take a break and make myself something to eat or something so later guy i appreciate it again thank you thank you very much laters